part 3 video of how to engage your child. Already we have completed part 1 video and part 2 video in which you have seen a, a important elements of or the starting point of engaging the child. Let's just look back into what we saw in part 1 and part 2 video. In part 1 video we were discussing about the point preparation. So when we are considering the term preparation, we said preparation at three level. Preparation of the mind of the parent. So parent have to prepare the mind in creating a schedule for the child on everyday basis on what are all the activities they have to do. And they also have to create in their mind that purpose of doing that activity that you want to increase the uh, thirstiness of learning in a child. So you have already prepared your mind in terms of purpose and also in terms of schedule. Secondly, we are going into preparing the mind of the child. So how will you prepare the mind of the child at two levels again? So allowing the child to choose to do that activity. And the second thing is asking them a lot of questions to bring up the curiosity within them. So this was the preparation mode towards the child. Third thing was preparing the environment. So whatever the activity you are going to do, the materials which are required and the places you are going to do that activity and the particular place where you are going to keep your things on everyday basis. So in that way you are bringing an organized setup environment where in which you can continuously do that activity with any hassle free towards finding where the brought, I mean, objects to work, work or where to sit and work. So this is in one way it has start going to instigate the starting of doing an activity with a child. So this was what part 1 is about. Part 2 is about going to the next level where in which at the time when you are engaging the child what are all the process you are going to follow. So in that process we saw four different uh, points. Okay? The first point was the introduction. Introduction is about introducing about any concept orally and giving them any introduction with some interesting stories or connected activities with that. So in that way when you are introducing orally Going into the second step, we will be introducing them with one object, giving them an experiential uh, understanding about the concept which we are introducing. So when we are giving them some experiential activity, they are going to use their hand and explore it with their fingers, which is again going to give them a next level of understanding in that concept. So third level, which when we are moving, when the child is doing that activity and you have shown him, you would like to know whether your child has understood that activity in for which many parents ask question or many parents test the child. Instead, we will not go do both of these things. Instead, we will start playing a game out of it. Be it in small, small things like any activities, you can do any games based on phonics, games on max. So a lot of activities you can do converting them in the gaming mode, wherein which the child will also be ready to play and you will also able to assess the child whether the child has understood the concept. So doing the three levels, you have to do another activity which is supportive of its writing activity. So writing activity, first you have to is touching that object, the child will be instigated to write about that particular concept, which is the symbolic representation of that particular concept. Maybe we can say if you have taught about small and big objects, you can show it in a paper what are all the small and big objects and make a circle out of it, make a matching out of it or doing a tracing out of it in case if you have introduced A, B, C, D with the tracing of that sandpaper letters or asking him to write it in a sand tray. Again, you are asking the child to do the same symbolic representation by tracing a line or tracing the uh, A uh, in a handwriting or in a writing uh, notebook. So in this way, we are following a process in terms of engaging the child uh, in that particular activity with so much interest at three levels. Oral introduction, experiential introduction, gaming activity, four is the symbolic representation supportive of writing. When we are finishing this concept, this was what part 2 is about. Now we are going to do the part 3 which is going to be the most important one because this is the secret which is going to help you to engage your child consistently, successfully on all days with more interest and more thirstiness to learn. So what is the point which I am going to discuss today? The first point I am going to discuss is there are three points in total which we are going to discuss. The first point which we are going to discuss today is about allow your child to make mistakes. So this is a message to you. We are not giving the message to the child. You have to keep it in mind that 
you will allow the child to do mistake for example you are teaching a child some concept in maths or now 1 to 10 in sequence you are uh, uh, you have taught and the child is repeating in a very uh, uh, mistaken manner like suppose 1 2 3 6 it says leaves out of 5 or 7 so there is a mistake which is happening which will definitely happen so initially when the child is making a mistake when you have introduced the concept you must allow the child to make that mistakes because there is a secret here why i told it's a secret because it's based on the brain development whenever we are introducing a new concept to the child we are in a mode to teach them properly learn them properly but from the child's point of view when the child is receiving any concept or learning a concept the child is always in a research and experimenting mode okay the research and experimenting mode are the mode which will definitely make mistakes and when they make mistakes we are here not to interfere correct or interrupt them but allow initially to make the mistakes and then we need to interfere after a while so what is that we can do so first thing is we need to understand why we should not correct the mistakes how we are actually correcting the mistake when the child is doing an activity either we are stopping or interrupting the activity by saying oh, no 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 do this way hey tell what how i do I, how i told you do how i told you so in that way first we are interfering in their activity second we are interrupting their flow of thoughts they have seen you and they are trying to repeat that activity and in that process the, they may miss the sequence of doing it so they may be trying to revive it but we are not giving enough space to revive it so we interrupt that flow of thought third one is we get into the correction mode correction mode is no this is not the way this is the way this is the way so the child is writing in a mirror direction five oh this is not the way you write this is the way you write so in that way we go into the correcting mode so three things we are doing we are interfering when they are in their flow of movement we are interrupting in their flow of thoughts thirdly we are getting into the correction mode so these three things you will avoid it and allow the children to make mistakes this is the first important ingredient of increasing the thirstiness to learn how is it will increase the thirstiness to learn remember i told you the child whenever is learning something new it is always in a research mode when it is in a research mode and when you are giving an object to do that activity for you it is experiential but for the child it is experimental when any experiment is happening the child is prone to make mistakes and if it does not make a mistake then only there is something which is peculiar or something wrong when it does make a mistake then it is in the right direction this is what as a parent we need to understand so from our point of view we need to allow the child to make mistakes this is first point and we should not do by interfering or interrupting or correcting them this is what we do in the process second thing what we have to do is when you have to interfere that is the next one when you have to interfere means for example you are introducing one or two days the same set of activities but still the child is making mistakes on the third day or particular on the second day you can just interfere and not in the mode of control correction or instruction you will not interfere in that mode at all because the child is actually experimenting and researching now you will enter here as a direction or guiding mode direction or guiding mode means why i am telling since the child is experimenting or researching you are going to now direct the child to do that particular experiment in a proper way in a proper direction so for example the child is writing 1 to 10 and missing out the 5 you can take the book and show can you see how 1 to 10 is written can you check if there are any numbers you have missed now the child is seeing it oh i have missed the number five so the child is automatically getting into a correction mode so here what happens first the child is learning and replicating it and now the child is getting into a self-correction mode and you will not correct the child the child will self-correct itself that is the second most important point you will keep in mind whenever you're directing or guiding the child you must allow the child to self-correct himself rather than you pinpointing the uh, where he has gone wrong and telling them correct okay self-correction is the only way which is going to increase the thirstiness to learn okay first point is increasing the the curve of learning where we are expanding the research process 
second level when you are allowing the child to correct by himself you are going to increase the thirstiness to learn more okay so whenever the child is doing an activity it will automatically go refer to somewhere and find out whether he has done correctly and self correct himself this is actually going to increase his intelligent quotient also okay so self correction is the second process which you will be doing it in a directing and guiding mode third one what you will be doing third one is whenever the child you find that he has understood the concept wonderfully you will not connect or associate with his understanding capability with a reward or too much praise okay first we will take it into reward whenever the child has completed doing some task wow today i am going to give you juice today i am going to give you chocolate today i am going to give you mobile today you can play games today you can watch tv today i am going to give that give this so what we are doing is whenever the child is showcasing his talent or showcasing his intelligence or completely cooperating with you we associate each of that attributes with a reward and when we are going to do always this the child's uh, actual learning capability is going to really get detrimental okay it's really going to get affected how i have detailedly explained in our montessori intensive program if you have attended my webinar also i have detailedly explained but to give you a clear understanding in a short way for example if you are doing something very nicely and i'm going to continuously start giving you rewards what happens is over a period of time the child's learning curve or learning thirstiness does not increase but the thirstiness towards getting the rewards or uh, for, uh, demanding starts to come so first is the learning mode switches on to wanting to get the rewarding mode and that's the next level it goes into demanding i will do this for you you get that for me today if i finish this homework will you give me well, that uh, mobile for one hour will you give me this will you give me that that demanding mode starts to come which is actually not going to uh, increase the learning curve or increase the uh, thirstiness or increase the intelligent quotient rather it's going to make your child behave in a wrong direction or directing we ourselves are directing the child in a wrong direction so we must never associate any of their learning capabilities or any of their good attributes with a reward we will cut down the link and second thing what we can do what we can do is praising too much praising after wow you've done this yes yes definitely 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 and after a while again the child starts to look out for praise oh i've done this you're not praising me i'm doing so much for you you're not praising me so all these kinds of things start to come up so the thirsty not for praise comes up rather than increasing the learning curves goes down if you're not going to praise the child the child will not do that particular activity so what you're going to combine here whenever the child is finishing a task you're going to give a tinge of praise which i would call incrementally challenging praises okay what is that incrementally challenging praise this is another secret ingredient which is going to actually change the whole scenario of learning time with your child so what is that the child has completed some 10 sums today and you're so happy instead of giving him some juice or whatever and instead of giving him a hug you can say wow today you are able to do 10 sums tomorrow also we are going to do some of the important sums which you are going to enjoy and you are capable of doing more than 10 sums so first what i am doing is i am acknowledging that he has done his work for which he actually requires an acknowledgement i am not praising wow you have completed the 10 sums you are capable to do more and tomorrow we will see another set of challenging activities which you would like to do would you like to do don't expect the answer to be yes be it yes or no whatever be it just appreciate that but your process and your way is just to give out this acknowledgement of incrementally challenging praise so what is going to the uh, the result of this the result of this is first the child is going to feel so much self worthiness about himself the child feels that he is able to do more and the child feels that tomorrow there is a work for him so already the parent has put a preparation for tomorrow's activity 
and the child feels he is capable to do that and the child will also get ready to do that activity tomorrow. So when you are going to continuously increase the cycle of incrementally challenging praise, the child is going to really do that activity regularly with you and if you are going to follow the first and second point, first point allowing the child to make mistakes is going to increase his learning capability. Second point when you are directing him to correct by himself, his intelligent quotient and problem solving mode is going to increase more. And third level, if you are going to associate with incrementally challenging praising element, then the child is going to consistently do that activity with so much interest and also becoming expert in that particular activity which he is doing. So this is the, these are the important points which we are discussing in part 3 video and you have to consistently do by preparing a schedule. That is more important. Parents, children are loving to learn. Children are wanting to learn. It's who, it's we who are not preparing them, preparing the environments. It's we who are not following the particular process which can create more interest in them. It's we who actually keep correcting them and make them feel really bored or really feel very uh, less about themselves by correcting them. So we have to actually alter all this process and engage them and giving them incrementally challenging praise is going to actually move the curve every day to the next next level. So with this I think you will be so much useful for you in part 1, part 2 and part 3 videos. Kindly follow all of this suggestion and type in the comment box what was your result as and when when you follow. If you like this video you can just tap the like button and if you feel that this video is going to be helpful for someone else just share this video for the other parents which will be useful. And with this we will come with another important video in a few days of time. Thanking you so much.